in his introduction. The presentation today is going to come from the Leadership Excellence Series of Toastmasters International. What this series is, is a group of presentations that's put together to help members of Toastmasters become better leaders in and outside of your respective Toastmasters clubs. The title of my project today is More Dungy Than Night. More Dungy Than Night. I want you to take a moment and think back in your life where you dealt with a coach. It could have been in the sports arena, it could have been in the workplace, social organizations, in your community. Think about the time that you dealt with someone coaching you through a process. The two gentlemen that I want to introduce you to, if you have not heard of them, is one, Tony Dungy, and two, Bobby Knight. Two driven individuals to coach to success. Very different in more than just their physical demeanor, but both driven towards success. Bobby Knight is a Caucasian American male, the winningest coach in men's NCAA basketball. Bobby Knight was known for tantrums, tirades, throwing things, including chairs, during meetings, during practices, even during games and interviews. Cursing, yelling, screaming, demeaning people. That's Bobby Knight, that's what he's known for. Tony Dungy, on the other hand, very calm, very cool, very collected, even killed, a man of God. To this day, there's not been one person that's played for him that can ever say they ever heard Tony Dungy raise his voice when things didn't go well. Two individuals, goal-oriented, driven towards their goal, coaches, leaders of men, but known for two completely different things. As a coach, there are universal principles. That is to provide a clear sense of direction. After all, if you've ever played any sports, you know that the coach doesn't just send a group of people out on the field or out on the courts and say, go win the game. There is clear direction as to what we are going to do there's a playbook, you practice the playbook, and you execute. In your work environment, your supervisor is a coach. They don't just go say, complete the project. There is methodology behind how you have to attack that. And that is one of the things that a good coach does. You have to foster collaboration. Don't just tell me what to do. Engage me in the conversation. I am going to be more connected with whatever the long-term goal is when I feel that I have had a part in figuring out how we we're going to reach that destination. So it's very important for you to collaborate with those people that are on your teams. And you motivate achievement. How do we motivate achievement? You give feedback. You talk about what went well, what could have gone better. You celebrate their successes. You let them know the impact of what they did, good as well as bad, because a lot of times when we're coaching, we pick up on the things that need to be improved, and we forget to tell people about the things that they did well, and what the impact was of the things that they did well. So it's really important that we motivate achievement. There are fundamentals of coaching, and that is, Tell your players, tell your team members what it is they're supposed to do. And that's important because if I don't know what it is you expect of me, how will I ever do it to your satisfaction? Really important. Think about that one for a minute. A lot of times we assume that a person is going to know and we just leave it at that. But we've got to make sure why they're supposed to do it. How many people in here engage with folks under the age of 30 in some aspect of your life? They are Generation Y. 
you can't just tell a Gen Y person to do something. They have tons of questions about why. And if they're not satisfied on why you're asking them to do the things that you're asking, it won't get done. And if it does, it'll be done in such a half-hearted way that you'll end up having to repeat it again. And the second time you repeat it, I guarantee you, you'll tell them why you're asking them to do it. So it's important to do that coming out of the gate. How they're supposed to do it. If you're introducing someone to something new, you have to make sure they understand exactly how to approach doing it. If you think about football, my favorite sport, those 11 players on offense and defense, they don't just go out on the field and either play offense or defense. Someone in meetings, in practice, in training is telling each player at each position exactly how they're supposed to do what they do. Running backs are taught not just run with the football, it's carry it in your outside arm. It's protected with both hands when you're in the middle of the field. When you block, you block with your hands here, not here. You have to tell people what to do. If you have direct reports in the workplace, you have to tell them how to accomplish the task or else they're going to do it the way that they think they're supposed to do it. And that's probably not going to be conducive to reaching the ultimate goal. How well are they supposed to do it? Self-explanatory. Do the job to the best of your ability. That doesn't mean do it to the best of my ability. That doesn't mean do it to the best of Sanders' ability. It means to do it to the best of your ability because that's what I can give you feedback on, how well you did the job, not how well someone else would have or could have done the job. And tell people how well they're doing. If we have a goal for the end of the month, a sales objective that we need to meet, then we need to talk weekly at a minimum to talk about how well we're performing to that goal. If I wait till the end of the month and say, well, Teresa, you were supposed to sell 50 direct TVs. You only sold 25. Guess I'm going to have to write you up for that. How effective was that coaching? How did I help her to meet her goal? I told her what it was. I thought she knew how to get it. And I never told her that she was behind pace until we get to the very end. I didn't help her at all. I was not being an effective coach. Which leads us to talk about what are the responsibilities. You set high standards. Has anyone in here ever worked in a sales environment? I have. Sandy, does the goal change if you hit it the next month? Oh, yeah. Of course it does. The bar rises. When you're working in a production environment and you meet the expectations, they're always going to rise. That's the world that we, that we live in. The key to it is you need to move the target. You need to raise the expectation. But you have to do it in a manner that is reasonable and achievable. If I asked you to sell 50 widgets this month and you sell 55, it's not unreasonable for me to ask you to sell 60 next month. But it is unreasonable for me to ask you to sell 100 and you will look at that number and go, there's no way that I can sell 100 if I really pushed hard to get to the 52. So now I don't even push to get to the 100 because I don't think that target is reasonable for me. So it is imperative that we raise the bar, but we do it in achievable man. Guide the team. Point people in the direction that you want them to go, and they will. I remember in my younger days playing football, as a defensive back, I had a coach. If he told you to pivot your hips out, if you're playing on the left-hand side of the field, or pivot them in, depending upon you, where your receiver was lined up, or he told you to square your hips with the receiver in front of you, and you didn't do it right, he would physically come over and twist your hips to the direction that he was telling you to put them in. That was his way of guiding you. Now, I'm not going to ask anybody in here to go and put your hands on anybody, but you have to have a method of guiding them in the direction 
that you want them to go. If you want them to create a PowerPoint presentation and you don't want the sheets to be busy, then you have to show them what a PowerPoint presentation that doesn't have too much stuff going on actually looks like. It's all about pointing people in the right direction. Offer support. Let them know that you're there to help them. There's nothing worse than having a boss, a leader, a coach, tell you what to do, but be unwilling to put their hands in the dirt, so to speak, to show you how to get it done. I had direct reports in the call center environment, first line coaches. One of the things that I spent way too much time doing is helping them to understand when you listen to a call and the agent didn't do something correctly, you give them feedback. But then you take the headset, take the next call, and model the behavior that you want them to display. And now they hear exactly what it is you're telling them to do. It's very important that you do that. You give advice. Coaches, you're doing that all the time. You're helping people to understand situations that they may be unfamiliar with. You always have to make sure that your agents understand you've been to where you want them to go, and you offer your experiences from those times that you've done what you're asking them to do. You provide feedback. Feedback truly is a gift. Feedback is not the time for Daryl to beat up on Ralph because I've been angry at him because the last presentation I did, he evaluated me bad. So now is my opportunity to just slam Ralph. Feedback is the opportunity to talk about, here's what you did well. Here's the impact to our organization. Here's what we need to approve on. Don't use the words wrong, because wrong is a relative word. There's always an opportunity to improve. There's always an opportunity to get better. When you start talking about right or wrong, it's all subjective to the individual. So you give that feedback on what went well, what could have gone better, how we can improve. And you encourage your teammates through positive reinforcement. There's nothing worse than someone beating you up every time they provide feedback because it's counterproductive. What they will do is turn you off as soon as they see you coming and they won't hear one thing you said, but they'll be glad to see you go. So it's very important that you offer encouragement to your teams. There's five steps to effective coaching. Compare performance with expectations. We talked about a little bit earlier. There has to be checkpoints from beginning to end to keep people on target. Make sure when you're giving that feedback and you're doing that coaching, you're reinforcing, here's where we want to be, there's the box, here's where you are today, this is what we need to do to ultimately get there. If you're ahead of the game, I encourage you to keep doing what you're doing to maintain that pace. If you're a little bit off pace, let's talk about what we can do to help you get closer in alignment to where you need to be, and then we'll reevaluate this as we go to make sure we're working towards our target, which is all included in when you're meeting with the team member. You've got to have those constant checkpoints. And it's not always about, let's talk about where you are in relationship to the goal. Sometimes it's just that, how you doing today? Glad to see you here at work today. I appreciate you being here. Thanks for supporting the team. Is there anything you need of me? You're checking in with your team members. You ask for acknowledgement. And asking for acknowledgement goes back to a slide we saw earlier with collaboration. If it's me doing all the talking and them doing all of the listening, and at the end of that discussion, I want to be, I want to say, well, do I have your agreement on? Well, you probably don't because I listened to the first part of what you said and then I tuned you out. But when it is a joint conversation, there's an open dialogue, then the person is more likely to acknowledge that they understand what the goals are and what they need to do going forward. Work towards a solution. We can always find problems. The goal is not to identify every problem, but is to provide solutions to the problems that we do address. And you follow up, follow up, follow up. When you make a commitment to follow up with someone, keep it. Don't tell them I'll be back to check on you tomorrow and show up two weeks later and say, hey, how's everything going? 
because they're just going to brush you off and show that you missed your commitment to them. Talk with them, not down to them. Admit when you've made a mistake. None of us are perfect. Perfection only exists in Webster's Dictionary. If you remove the word from the dictionary, then it won't exist anywhere. Keep things simple. Complicated is just that. Complicated and doesn't work towards goals. You listen to the people on your team for their feedback that helps support that collaboration. Keep it short. Keep it specific. Make it to the point. And most importantly, be sincere. If you ever want to tune your employees out, don't let them see it because you're not being genuine. If you want them to tune you out, then don't be sincere because they'll tune you out. Most importantly, when you show sincerity, you show the first two letters of those words don't exist, which are BS. <laughs> so make sure you're sincere. And be timely. We talked about that earlier. Benefits of coaching, when you do it and do it right, high morale, they feel empowered, they develop and grow, and you coach by example. I'm going to close with a quote from Bobby Knight and from Tony Dungy. Tony Dungy says, the secret to success is good leadership. Good leadership is all about making the lives of your team members or workers better. That's how he leads his team. The most famous quote from Bobby Knight is, when my time on earth is gone and my activities here are past, I want them to bury me upside down and my <laughs> critics can Kiss my Mr. Toastmaster. <laughs> <laughs>